I got to interview Jamie Barton. I was fangirling the entire time. Thank you so much for accepting to do this interview. It was a no-brainer after I saw your YouTube series. <laughs> Jamie Barton was born in Georgia, in the United States of America. I grew up on a farm in the middle of nowhere. My parents are old school hippies. It was a really cool upbringing to have, but of course when you go through teenage rebellion, what you're trying to do is to rebel against where you came from. And even if your parents are ridiculously cool hippies, you're still gonna find something that's the opposite of them. And hilariously enough for me, that was classical music. In 2007, she wins the Metropolitan National Council auditions. In 2010, she is a Grammy nominee. In 2013, she wins the BBC Cardiff competition. In 2014, she wins the International Opera Award and the Marian Anderson Award. In 2015, she gets the Richard Tucker Grant. In 2017, she wins the Beverly Sills Award. And this year, 2020, she was named the Personality of the Year by the BBC Music Magazine Awards. Whew. How do you mentally prepare for this kind of success and th this pressure that comes with this job? That's a really great question, actually. <laughs> it's one that a lot of people don't ask because I think people think that once you have won this award or sung on this stage, then you've made it. So Cardiff Singer of the World was really the competition that I feel like put me on the map. To Jamie Barton. <laughs> When it did, my manager, he told me, we're gonna take all of the offers that come in in the next like two or three months, we're gonna put them in a pile, and then we're gonna sit down and we're gonna go through whatever you wanna do. I simultaneously was like, I can't believe I'm this lucky. Like I get to say yes or no, depending on if I want to do it. At the same time, I was nauseous as hell because there was a lot coming up. There is a lot of pressure that comes with it. She is one of the most politically engaged opera singers there are. She fights for causes like body positivity, social justice issues, she's against diet culture, and she defends the LGBT rights. My goal in being outspoken about all of this is to help push our industry and hopefully, you know, a, a piece of our world a little closer towards having a much more broad definition of representation. The audience members who we hope to get into the theater to come watch us, we have to make them feel like they belong there. One of the most powerful images of her career is when she waved the pride flag on the stage of the BBC proms in London. It was quite a moment. That was maybe one of the coolest moments of my life. <laughs> well, how did this decision come to life and how did you organize this moment? Was it just you or did they know what was about to happen? Oh, they knew, they knew. The BBC was totally in on it. It's always been the kind of concert where the guest artist kind of brings a bit of their personality with them. And at this point, if I were to wave a Union Jack flag, that would have been a clear Brexit support kind of thing. I didn't feel comfortable waving my own country's flag. I love my country, but I don't love my government right now. But then I started thinking and I was like, it's the 50th year of Stonewall. The pride flag, even before I knew that I was queer, represented unity and inclusivity and acceptance and love. So I went to the BBC and I told them what I wanted to do. I was really nervous, but then I had the thought, you know, they literally hired the girl with the side shave and the purple hair. They know what they're getting into. <laughs> they were the ones that were like, why don't you do a Judy Garland inspired group? And I was like, yes. She's one of the singers that have a hell of a voice. <laughs> and a great message. I want her to be my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> 